truckers who move their wares along U.S. Route 101, running alongside, and sometimes in sight of, the West Coast, began to receive a distress call over their CB radios, which continued through the dog days of the summer of 2014. A man who identified himself as Gary Oakes claimed he was broadcasting from the coastal town of Manzanita, Oregon. Although the sea beers could hear Gary's cries for help clearly over the radio, nobody could find him. Gary Oakes rented a house in Manzanita, a house where he found a guest book sitting on the desk in his bedroom. He discovered the previous guest used this book to keep a daily journal over the course of five days. It captured his interest because around the edge of each page were smudges that resembled bloody fingerprints. The five entries he found were signed by Kevin. Kevin was so happy on day one, in spite of the fact that the house next door was undergoing a major renovation, and his thoughts were randomly interrupted by some construction worker with a nail gun or a circular saw. He was very pleased when he tested the bed. The mattress was hard and good for his back, and beds like that were hard to find. The next day, Kevin suspected something odd. He went to the beach. When he got there, it was empty. Back at the house, abnormally quiet. It was the middle of the week, but the construction workers were gone, leaving their tools all over the place. Did they not worry about theft? After finishing the last of the food he brought with him, Kevin slept well enough that night. On day number three, Kevin needed groceries. Although only shortly after noontime, when he got to the deli, it was closed. Just a couple blocks away was Mother Nature's health food store, which was also locked up. So was the largest grocery in town, the fresh food store. He told himself that this could happen in a town with a population of less than a thousand. Perhaps they all went to the high school basketball game an away game. He would have to eat whatever canned food he could find in the house cupboards. But he was most worried because he had not seen another human being all day long. Just a few seagulls pecking at scraps in a parking lot. Day four is when the electrical problem started. The house lost power, and it took 90 minutes for Kevin to get the generator started. He didn't even bother turning it off when he decided to leave town early. But when he tried his key, the car would not start. Full tank of gas, good charge in the battery, but no ignition. Kevin's last short entry is dated day five. Although he was weak from hunger and thirst, he intended to walk south on Route 101 in hopes of finding help in one of the towns along the way, even though their populations were supposed to be even less than that of Manzanita. 
At this point, Gary Oakes stops reading the guest book and puts it down. He thinks about escaping the town in his own truck, but he also is unable to start his vehicle. His CB radio still broadcasts, and he calls for help, complaining that he is receiving no answer, and that he hears only static in response. Apparently, Gary has also fallen into that dimension, where he seems to be the only man left on Earth. Kevin and Gary Oakes are not the only ones to fall into the black hole of Manzanita. It also swallowed a third man who did not have a CB radio, but who did have wireless access to the internet. Before he too disappeared, he uploaded photographs of the actual pages in the Manzanita guest book. There you can see Kevin's day-by-day -day journal entries, and you can find all of this online in his own handwriting. 